Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the top 10 um, things that I learned in Scum this year. Like most of you know, I've got around 7,000 hours in Scum. And a lot of the times, my community teaches me about something new or we discover something new together. But as you guys know, I like using bows, okay? So if I can just get away from the noise at the moment, um, there is a reason to use wooden arrows and there's a reason to use carbon broad, carbon broaded arrows, okay? Wooden arrows is fantastic for leveling up your archery skill and then your carbon broaded arrows is great for killing difficult puppets, you know, like the armored puppets or the razors. Um, and of course, very, very good versus players if you've got a very good bow, like if you've got a ballista bow or you've got a compound bow that you set with the toolbox, okay, then these arrows can be very, very powerful. The biggest frustration that I've had is not, not being able to choose what arrow I'm using, okay, but um, due to a few tests, we've seen that the height that you place the item at has got a lot to do with it, okay? So I'm using the carbon broaded arrows at the moment, and as you see, I'm sticking to the carbon arrows. But if I put the carbon arrow below the wooden arrow and I press V, then I'm going to be switching to the wooden arrow, okay? So we've got the wooden arrow, we're firing the wooden arrow. Now, if you don't want to press V and you just want to switch the arrow fast, like there's a player, then you can immediately switch to the carbon broaded arrow. Okay? So the height has got a lot to do with it. So you can use a military quiver and just swap space like this. If three slots is a little bit too much for you to swap, okay, you can always just put them upright like this and then you can just waste like a little block. So just because the wooden arrow is one cell um, higher than the carbon arrow, as soon as I fire the carbon arrow, we're back to the wooden arrows. Okay? So I have found that very, very helpful. Okay? So I'm going to kill the one puppet. I'm going to kill the one puppet with the wooden arrow and the next puppet with the carbon arrow. Okay? And then I want to get back to the wooden arrow. So I'm just going to press V and equip the wooden arrow. Okay, so this is the fastest way I found out to switch arrows. Just got to do with the height. You know, and then we go lower, and we're at the carbon arrow, and then we put lower, and we go to the wooden arrow, and then we go, you know, then we can go higher again, and we're at the carbon arrow, and then we can go higher again, and then, then we're at the wooden arrow. Hope this helps. The second tip that I've learned this year is all of us that do abandoned bunkers, I'm not focusing on Brenner's armories. All of us that are getting used to the abandoned bunkers, if we do all the depositories and we do all the tops, like the black tops as well, we can see that at the moment, I don't know if it's going to change in the future, but we always have to adapt to the changes that's happening. So at the moment, we're finding a lot of weapon um, cleaning kits in the abandoned bunkers. That means that the World War II bunkers are becoming a lot more valuable because, like, I'm here at the D4 airfield, you know, the military airfield, which has got quite a few um, abandoned bunkers. And, yeah, you know, because we're finding so many weapon cleaning kits... Um, at the abandoned bunkers, the low durability items that we get in the World War II bunkers, the value of them have gone up quite a bit. Because the biggest problem when you find low durability um, item is that, you know, it's going to jam on you or it's going to get you killed or something like that. But that is not the case because of the weapon cleaning kits that you can find very, 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 very quickly. Okay? So this this place has got a bunch of, um, you know, like the pink boots aren't really worth it, but the D4 airfield has got a bunch of um, World War II bunkers. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to loot. I'm just going to loot these few World War II bunkers. Okay? There's a row of them on the west side of the military airfield and then we see you know what we get 
Okay, guys, I wasn't lucky enough to find any um, sniper rifles in the World War II bunkers, but I have, like, I have done a run here where I get, like, five sniper rifles with 20 or 30% durability. Um, I've walked out of here with three different sniper rifles, the Mosin, the Car 98, you know, and the, and the M1, M189. But as you guys can see, good loot, good ammo, good food. Okay, so just remember, we can utilize those um, weapon cleaning kits at the moment. And I'm just risking my life here, looting the looting the abandoned bunkers that's in the middle of the sector, which is quite dangerous. So I think I'm gonna just have some fun here quickly while I'm at it. Okay, so now we can get out of here. Just a quick little bonus tip for you guys. I think a lot of you have looted the half moons in military points of interest and thought to yourself, what is up with all the clothing and the, you know, the beanies and the like stuff that you don't think belongs in a military point of interest. Whenever you pick up clothing in a half moon, please look at it as bandages. Okay? So understand that yeah they could have put bandages or medical equipment in there but every piece of clothing you find you can turn into a rag that can help you survive at the end of the day and as soon as you get alcohol or you wash it at a river with water then it goes up to 100 percent and it can be the difference between life and death so please remember all the clothing that you get in half moons Look at it as medical equipment, and it can be the difference between life and death, especially if you've got very low um, constitution, you could maybe die from an infection. But you won't because of another tip that I'm going to give you. Another little bonus tip. I used to come here um, in one of the updates, and I couldn't get through here. Okay? Okay. But just in case you guys wanted to know, at some point I couldn't get through these gaps at the military airfield. But now when you crouch, you can get through these gaps. Which is a major plus because it is quite dangerous going into the gates through the you know, through the sentries. Now exactly the same can be said with gunpowder. A lot of people don't pick up gunpowder in military points of interest because they don't see the immediate use of it but again if you look at everything how you can convert it in in a many in a military form you can you can craft ammo with this and then you guys might say but yes Matthias, what about the what about the lead plating and i understand when you get a broken down battery okay um in like a vehicle repair you know like in a vehicle repair shop it's it's not very it only gives you like one lead plate okay so you guys might be struggling with um lead plating but if you just charge the car battery okay if you just charge the car battery and you take uh whatever i'm gonna take a club Okay, I'm going to take a wooden club. If you just charge the, the battery and then you break it into lead plating, you get one lead plating for, ev for every 20 charges that it has. Okay? So the reason that you're not getting a lot of lead plating from the batteries that you find is because the battery's um, power is under 20%. But as you can see, that battery had 100% power, 
which you can charge in a battery charger or you can charge it by driving a vehicle, you know. Put the old battery in, drive the vehicle, come back, switch the charged battery with the previous battery. You know, you can just charge batteries like this. But now you can craft a heck of a lot of ammo, which converts into military equipment. Okay, tip number three, ladies and gentlemen, with just a biking backpack, okay, five small screwdrivers, one, no, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, three advanced lockpicks that you can easily get from the hospital or cargo drop, and then 15 crowbars. You can make a heck of a lot of money at, in the radiation zone at the power plant if you focus on the hazmat suit locker and the... The hazmat suit locker and the potassium locker immediately. The biggest threat about the power plant is the radiation, okay? So if you want to come in here with the radiation suit, you can. I'm going to do it without even coming in here with a gas mask. The best tactic is to come in here with a hazmat suit or a gas mask, okay? A gas mask you can find quite easily. I'm just showing you how we can do it without anything okay just the hiking backpack and i'm going to stop you at this red truck just the hiking backpack and okay there's a few puppets here just the hiking backpack and of course we should you should probably bring a weapon in here I'm testing high, high spawns for puppets, so I hope I survive this. So yeah, you come into this door, you go all the way to the end, okay? You go straight up these stairs all the way up. Once you can't go up anymore, you just go across the hall and go up again until you can't go up anymore. And then you cross over, you open this door, okay? You run over here. You just walk onto this ledge, start running. Speed is quite important because you are dying from radiation at the moment. Climb up there, drop down here, get onto this ledge. Don't focus on this uranium. You're not focusing on the uranium yet. You go through here, through this thick cloud, through this thick smoke. Open up the door. Behind the door, you open up this door. And now you're focusing on these two lockers. Okay? This this one with the big lock and the two radiation symbols is the suit. And this is the potassium. Okay? So we're going to quickly just pick this. Okay, you put the suit on immediately. You put the suit on immediately, okay? And um, you you might get a depleted uranium container, okay? You just put it on the ground, and then you want to get to this one immediately. And this one's going to be very, very, very easy. Okay, then you get the potassium. Then you take your suit off quickly. It's actually better to start with a potassium one. You eat three potassium. That will give you 60 minutes of protection. Okay, because it's more the effective radiation that kills you. Okay, so we drank the potassium. We came in here with nothing. And we just gained 17.2% radiation. Okay, the effective radiation will go away because of the potassium that's in our system. And then we can swim. When we come out of here, we can swim in a river to take our radiation down to 14.4%, and then we can just pee. We can just drink a lot of water and pee until the radiation is gone, okay? Another thing that I want you to bring is um, duct tape, because as you crow barring, um, as you crow barring, you're going to damage, you are going to damage the hazmat suit, okay? You see the hazmat suit at 99.7%, as you are crowbarring, 
you're going to damage the suit. Now, that's going to take quite long, depending on your strength and thievery. Um, higher thievery skill makes it faster, and high strength makes this faster. But it's going to damage the crowbar so that it's just got 20% durability left, okay? So I'm just going to do these... Um, going to do 12 lockers quickly and show you what we get. Okay, uh, I'm going to open the other lockers with guard mode, but we're just going to see the information here. So when you open a locker, I've got four and a half strength and advanced thievery. So um, I'm opening up the locker a lot faster, but let's say it damages your hazmat suit with about four with four or five percent okay you can repair it with the duct tape so we've got three three percent missing there and if we use the duct tape on it it's taking 15 uses okay so and we're going to do this 12 times so you actually need six to nine duct tape to make sure your suit stays in perfect and perfect shape okay but here we've got the uranium so we can drag the uranium out okay now, that uranium is going to be damaged by 20% because we use the crowbar, okay? And now we can just drag this and depleted uranium container. Please don't take more than one uranium container from here. It doesn't sell for a lot, okay? But we can put that in the uranium container. And then once we've used up, you know, quite a bit of the crowbars, then we can just put the uranium container in there. I'm going to activate guard mode and then we're just going to open 12 lockers because we are just saving time okay that's all we're doing and i can show you the price of the of the uh the pd uranium container and we compare the damaged uranium um you know and not the full not the full one so basically when we're done with this we would have used all 12 crowbars which would have given us a lot of space okay so we've done one um, uranium container. This is two. Okay. Then we go three. We don't take that. Four. Five. six and we can just put them in here we've got six so far seven eight nine Ten. Okay, let's do the three outside quickly. And yeah, this the wrong way. Okay, through the through the fog. We can do these three, so yeah, this will give us 12, okay? This will give us 12. And we can take this one now, because we need, we need at least two of them to carry all the uranium. The, the uranium container can, can only take can only take like um, eight of them, okay? We're gonna open up this one, we're gonna open up this one. Okay, and then we're just taking the two random containers. You never wanna take this to sell it, okay? And then as a bonus, let's say you did well with your lock picking. If you did terribly with your lock picking, you call it a day, okay? You call it a day. But if you did well with your lock picking, you're going to come, you're going to quickly come to the other side. And you're going to lock pick the, you're going to start with the, with the easy one. I'm just going to turn the guard mode off. 
So you're gonna start with the easy one, which you don't need any skill for, guys. This is a normal, it's a normal thing that you can open up. Okay, to get the potassium. And then we just quickly need to take off our lying down helps a little bit with FPS as well. We're just gonna take off the uh, the hazmat suit just to quickly um, try and lockpick this because the suit is making it very very difficult. Okay, let's just use. The, so we let's say you were successful or not successful. Sorry, I've got a notepad on my mouse here, so I'm very limited with my movement on my mouse pad. But let's just say you were successful. Okay, let's just say you were successful. Then you're getting a, another hazmat suit, which is quite important. Okay, and if you take this to the traders, so here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Twelve crowbars later, and six small screwdrivers. A bit of advanced lockpicks. So, there we go. Okay, you can keep the hazmat so that you go in with the hazmat next time. It's your choice. Okay, or you can just sell everything you got. You can, uh, never mind the duct tape. Okay, we won't we won't sell the duct tape. But just for no, that register. run, we get yeah, fifty thousand. Nobody cares. Okay, 50,000 bucks right there. And like I say, it doesn't take a lot of skill. The potassium one, you can open up very easily. If you've got it, like I could only use half my mouse pad because I've got the tips, um, the tips writing pad on my mouse pad. So I could only use half of it. Most of us will be able to open that. Um, those two hazmat suit lockers, okay? With at least 18 advanced lock picks. So that is a very, very easy way. And like you guys saw, I went in there with nothing. And now that we've got the radiation presence, luckily we've still got the potassium in our system. Okay, so we can we can sell absolutely everything that we have on us, and like buy new clothing. We just made 50,000, 50, Okay, so we can definitely sell everything on us and just buy new clothing. There is like if you leave these things lying on the floor, or you wash them Welcome. with soap, you know you can buy soap to clean them if you want to. So maybe it's, you know, maybe it's better to just use some soap here. We need full fame, okay? So luckily, luckily we don't need a lot of fame points for this. Let's put our fame points at 100. Okay, so we buy soap. Okay, three bars of soap. That's 300, not a problem. And then we just sell everything else. Okay, we don't want to sell our hiking backpack, but we sell everything else. Okay. Let's see what you have. There we go. So now we've got just got the hiking oh, well. backpack on because the hiking backpack is, is at least worth a thousand. Okay. We run to the river. We see we've got 21.4% radiation. And then as soon as we come to the river, we can just stand in the water. Okay. And then we can wash the hiking backpack. Okay. And there the radiation is gone from the hiking backpack. And now we can literally swim. You can see we're at 21.4% radiation. And now we swim in the water until we're at about 14.4%. Okay. The water is going to wash off most of your external radiation. The potassium is going to get rid of the effective radiation. Okay. And we'll be able to do this up until 14, about 14.4%. Okay. 14.6%. Okay. And that's it. Now you go and buy your clothing. Okay. Now you go buy clothing for yourself. And every time your blood is full, you pee. And at some point, you would have peed away all the radiation. Okay? And that's officially tip number three. Tip number four, ladies and gentlemen, is in the past, the last time I tested sensors on traps or sensor range, okay? Or motion sensor ranges on traps. Uh, the demolition skill had an effect on the range of the trap, okay? But at the moment... Um, it doesn't have any effect on the motion sensor. It doesn't have an effect on it anymore, okay? 
So that helps us a lot because there's no real advantage to getting to advanced demolition. Medium is more than enough because as long as you hit medium demolition, you're able to craft all the explosives that there are, okay, um, in the crafting arsenal, like the improvised claymore, the C4, and the pressure cooker, the pipe bomb, you know, laser, like here's the basic. This is, this is, you only need, you need basic for, to craft these three, okay? So medium is more than enough. And even if you try and kill a suicide puppet, the only, the only reason that you want advanced um, demolition, and I don't think you need advanced, but according to me, the only reason why you would need an advanced Demolition is to get an extra second on the suicide puppet. Okay, so I'm just gonna try my luck here. Just wanna see his head. There we go. So yeah, um, let's just see how many seconds we get here. It looks like we're gonna get four seconds with medium. Okay, I'm not sure if we got four seconds there. I think I'm going to die even with Phoenix Tears on me. But that's because of my low constitution. That's because of the test ball that I'm using. Okay, I'm just going to get the wire cutter quickly. Let me check the timer. No, three seconds. We're getting three seconds. Okay, we get it. We're getting three seconds. So, I believe this is the only place where it's going to benefit you. If you, but I don't think you need advanced demolition. Okay. I've heard that you only need 50% to advance. So I've heard that you only need to get to 50%, okay? Let's test that out. Another bonus tip for you, ladies and gentlemen, is you will see that as soon as you hit medium demolition, you, you aren't able to level up demolition anymore when you're using the default wire cutter. So, or the default wire cutter timer, like we're on six seconds. So if I press space bar and I cut the wires, Okay, I've got the demolition um, level to 10. Okay, times 10. The skill level multiplier of demolition, I've got to 10 for this test. Okay, so you will see there 48,489,000. Okay, I'm going to cut the wire at six seconds. Okay, you can't, you can't level. But if you press the keypad, like right here on the right of the screen, it says use the arrow keys to set the practice time. If you press down once, yeah, on your arrow keys, so now we've got five seconds. With five seconds, we got about 2,000, okay? We got about 2,000 XP there. Remember, I'm on a times 10 multiplier. Now, doing three seconds is, for me personally, insane, okay? I'm not there yet. Can I do, if I set this to three, three seconds, can I do it? Um, yes, can I do it consistently? No. So, five seconds gives you fame. Four seconds gives you more fame. Three seconds gives you even more fame, okay? But to, so, for you to prepare yourself for a suicide puppet, it's good to practice on four seconds because that's what a suicide puppet is going to be on, okay? So, let's just try this. Okay, so there, 
it went up by five thousand. Okay, so it's almost five times more experience. But every single time you go in, you must press down twice. My right arm is actually sore at the moment. My right shoulder is sore because of the times that I had to lift my arm and press the, you know, change the timer on the demolition bomb. Okay, so there we are halfway. We're 500,000. Okay, we are now at 500,000. We're going to load the crossbow bolt. We're going to spawn in the suicide puppet. And take this in our hands. And then see if we can do it. See if we can do it. Okay, so I think that was four seconds. Okay, so at medium, okay, so we get C4 parts. At from medium, you cannot level up your demolition skill with the default timer setting anymore. You decide if you want to put it to five seconds or four seconds. If you're insane, you can try three seconds. For me, the only reason I'm leveling up demolition to to 50% of advanced is to get the extra second on the suicide puppet. Okay, and if we check now, then we're going to see that we get four seconds on this. Okay, so if we go and defuse it, I'm going to blow up now on purpose. Just want to make sure I've got Phoenix Tears, eh? Yeah, I've got Phoenix Tears. Okay, so we're just going to blow up here on purpose, but you'll see we're going to start from four seconds instead of three seconds. There, okay, we started from four seconds instead of three seconds. Whoa, that was close. <laughs> we just, just just made it there. But yes, guys, so that's something something I learned this year as well. You know, like I I like wire cutting. I like practicing wire cutting. Demolition is one of my favorite skills. But I did see past medium. I couldn't gain any more skills. Then some people made guides about crafting practice bombs. That was like jumping off a bridge repeatedly. So, yeah, I just basically changed the timers. Um, and then saw that I got fame and or I got skills in the demolition skill tree. And then I found four to be the sweet spot. If you're struggling, you can do five. But again, the only again, I don't see I don't see why you would practice at four seconds. Okay. So when you come to the demolition, when you come to the practice bomb and you disarm it. Like, I don't see why you would go to five seconds. Because the only reason you need to reach 50% to advanced is to get the four seconds on a suicide puppet. But if you're not going to just focus on suicide puppets, you don't need to go to, you know, you don't need to go to 50% toward, halfway towards advanced demolition. Okay? You can stay at medium demolition. But if you want to, Diffuse suicide puppets, then go on four seconds and practice on four seconds, okay? So you can level so you can level up that skill. And looks like we got quite a bit. Like we want 50%, we're now on 60%. So it actually looks like you get more from diffusing a suicide puppet. Like, usually I just get 5,000, even with the times 10 multiplier on the demolition skill. I, 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 it took me very long to get to 50%, guys. So this boosted really, really, really quick now. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking once you get, sorry, let me just um, stop the Discord here. So ladies and gentlemen, one last tip. After you have set your, your, your um, practice bomb to four seconds, and you've gotten to medium. If you want to get to advanced or advanced plus as fast as possible, then you're going to need to go into the real world and risk your life, okay? Because at the moment, we've got 598,000. If we disarm this at four seconds...
if we disarm this at four seconds, we're getting about 2,000. Okay, you can see it didn't even move from 60%. Okay, the skill didn't move from 60%. We got about 2,000 there. But, but, if we, if we go directly to suicide puppets because we've reached our four seconds... add that to my quick slot look at that okay 10 it's about 10 times more it's about 10 times more for defusing a suicide puppet okay so that's my bonus tip you can level up to medium demolition with with a six second timer so you can get comfortable with it as soon as you hit medium you have to set the timer to four seconds to get halfway to advanced once you're at halfway to advanced apply your skills on a suicide puppet and go for broke okay if you like this video guys i'm sure most of the information you didn't know if you like this video just do me a favor and click that like button and if you're not subscribed yet Click that subscribe button to be notified of future videos, okay? Never going to stop helping you, and I'm never going to stop learning. Tip number five, guys, is do not ignore the 200 and the 400 fuses, okay? With as little as two 200 fuses, you can, if you use the 200 fuse, okay? You can um, open up this one over here, okay? With, with one 200 fuse. You can open up both depositories very, very, very close to you. Okay? So with one 200 fuse, I can power A. And then... I can... I can get into this room. Okay? Um, let me just... Disable this. I can enter the key, key code there. Okay. Now this place isn't too great. But those two, there's two lockers inside there. Which you can lock pick. Those two lockers are really, really good. Okay. And then when you go put in the, the other 200 fuse. You can open up F. Okay. So if we just go power F now, also with just a 200 fuse, and if you jump, you it helps your noise level. I don't do this usually, but just trying to speed up the video. So again, you can come and try and open. Uh, you can come and open this as well. Okay, so that gives you this this, this depository. The other one gives you the other depository. And then even with just the 400 fuse, you decide what you want to do with the, with the 400 fuse, okay? It's your choice what you do with the 400 fuse. Now, option one is you just power um, A and B, okay? When the razor falls down, so we can just power A and B. So when the razor comes down, you can just open up this door. Okay, close the door, kill the razor through the window. Okay? But again, it's your choice. With the 400 fuse, you can try open both these depositories if you want to. But even if you don't want to do the depositories, that one 400 fuse is still more than enough to do the black tops, okay, which are extremely worth it. So with just the 400, I can come here, turn this off, You can search all the black tops.
And each of these BMG rounds are about $4,000, okay? Each of them are about $4,000. But you, and then you get grenades, and you get toolboxes, you get a lot of things, okay? And then you can just get out of here. Just power A and B. You can even go take your 400 views if you want to. Your choice. And that's it. Okay, so what I'm trying to tell you is you... The 200 fuses can still net you loot. And any depository that you open can give you intelligence module to upgrade your intelligence. And a 400 fuse can get you to the black tarps and back. Okay? A 400 fuse can get you into the second level. So you can go search the medical rooms. You can go and try the other de uh, depositories. Okay? But don't underestimate 200, 400 fuses. Especially the A the F, and of course, the B, okay? All the, all of the depositories in front of you, if you just loot those four depositories, you will get intelligence modules, you will get good loot, and you will get great fuses for level two, okay? And then you decide when you want to go for level two or Brenner's Armory. Now, tip number six. If you ever struggle with your stamina, okay, If you're ever struggling with your stamina when crowbarring, it's got a lot to do with your weight. So you guys can see we are we are recovering our stamina now, okay? The little running man there on, on the left, okay? We're at 100% stamina. So if you crowbar with a lot of weight on you, we're just going to go until we're about at 90% stamina, okay? There, we've lost 10% stamina very, very quickly. If we take off the backpack while crowbarring, we're not losing any stamina. This applies to, okay, we lose stamina, but very, very, very slowly, okay? But basically, the more weight you have on you, the faster your stamina is going to drain when you crowbarring lockers. This applies to police lockers, armory lockers, um, uranium lockers, okay? If you want to crowbar without worrying about your stamina, make sure you drop your tactical vest or your hiking backpack. Um, for me, the backpack, the amount of weight that you have on your backpack has the most, has the biggest effect on this, okay? So remove your backpack when you're crowbarring if you don't want to worry about your stamina. Tip number seven is garlic is a lifesaver for any of you that want to start with lower constitution, okay? Because your constitution affects your immune system, okay? And how, um, how much you're going to struggle with infections. So if you want to start with a character with one constitution to put it into something else, that's not a problem. This is a test build of mine. Um, that I'm busy with at the moment, okay? Um, but yeah, let's, if we spawn in a, uh, if we spawn in a, few, a puppet here, so we're just going to spawn in a puppet, and we're going to let him hit us. Okay, you guys will see because of my two constitution, okay, or if you've got one constitution, you're going to be struggling with infections 
a lot. But with garlic, which you can buy for very, very cheap, you can find it and you can farm it. Okay? And you can farm it. Garlic is the new antibiotics. It's a very cheap way for antibiotics. So if you want to start with the character, the one or two constitution, but you're getting frustrated with the infections, just build a small little farm, okay? Like, even if you don't want to farm, build a small little farm with four patches, okay? Put some garlic plants there and then grow some garlic. And then every time, you know, you get into danger with um, an infection, you just eat some garlic, okay? And one use um, gives you about a 1,000% boost to your immune system, and then every time you see you're going to run out of it, you just eat it again. That will boost, you know, that will boost your immune system again. And that's it, guys. That's it. Of course, we know we, if we lie down, we're going to heal faster. Okay, that's an old tip. As soon as you heal, your healing speed, your healing speed um, doubles. Okay, and then you don't you you don't struggle with infections anymore. Garlic is the new antibiotics. You can find it in the world. You can buy it for a fifth of the price of one antibiotic pill, and you can farm it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, flashbangs are very, very p powerful when it comes to PvP fights in the game, especially when a person is behind a tree or behind a bush or in a cargo drop. As long as you throw the flashbang close to the person and that flashbang's within that person's 180 degree vision range, you can blind him. So I've got Avenger here helping me, and what he's going to do is going to open the door. Like, like, you know, that happens sometimes. You open a door, you see someone's in there. So he's going to open the door, he's going to see me, he's going to back away at an angle, and, he, and I'm going to, like, aim. Now, you know, like, imagine I'm aiming in case he wants to kill me, and all he's going to do is throw the flashbang in, and we'll see what I can see um, or where he can stand. He's going to try and stand right on top of me before my vision, vision comes back, okay? So here we go. Ready? Yep. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I don't see him. I'm blind. And let's see what he can do. I can't hear much. There's whistling. I can't see anything. You're too fat. I can't get behind you, but I would be able to. Yeah. <laughs> and then where is my attacker? Hi. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this works in a cargo drop perfectly. And then a lot of fights happen between trees and bushes and stuff like that. So let's say he's behind that tree. He knows where I am. I know where he is. Okay, so let's just say we're fighting here. Okay, I'm using the tree. He's using the tree. I want to get an angle on him. He's trying to get an angle on me. So what he's going to try and do now is throw the flashbang right here in front of me. And then we'll see how close he can get to me after he's throwing the flashbang. Okay, here it comes. Can't see anything. Can't hear anything. He's definitely not there anymore. Okay. So you were running here, right? You were running here, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Running full speed. So mm -hmm. I didn't hear him at all. I didn't see him at all. So if you don't want to use grenades because it, they can be used for raiding, okay? Sometimes a grenade is a very, very nice tool. If you like shoot a metal, a metal base wall with a with a rocket, you know, then you've only got like 50 health left. Then grenade grenades are very nice to finish off the wall without using another rocket or TNT. So flashbangs are very, very powerful in PvP fights. Between two trees, in a cargo drop, or if if um, I'm behind that bush and he's behind that bush, I can literally throw the flashbang. So we're just going to use the bush method here quickly. Unfortunately, the cargo drops a bit in the way here. But I mean, this is the bush. So he's behind this bush, I'm behind this bush. Okay, so he's there, he's there, I'm here, 
we're just using the bushes, okay? So I'm using the bush so that he can't see me. He's using the bush so that I can't see him. We're trying to get an angle on each other, and he's going to throw the flashbang in front of this bush because he knows I'm behind the bush. Okay, that didn't last very long. Oh, okay. Okay, try and throw it again in front of me. Wait a second, where even are you? Yeah. Yeah, oh, I'm just oh. behind this bush, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, no wonder it didn't really work out. Okay, here we go. Okay, so he's running at me. I can't hear anything. I can't see anything. I can run, but I mean, if I run out of the bush, it's even easier for him to kill me. And now I'm like, in, oh my word, what the flip happened? Where is he? <laughs> and there he is. Flashbangs, guys. Flashbangs. Let's go. Okay, guys, you know that pesky armor that you guys can't shoot through? Remember to take a grenade launcher. Okay. And player killed. Most of the time, you're going to destroy all the wheels, okay? But if you're really lucky, you can kill the player and just take his car. And remember, there's the anti-personnel. This is the anti-personnel rocket, Gus. And you kill everything. You kill everything. Okay? So, with the anti-personnel rocket, not the warhead, the warhead you use for raiding. The anti-personnel rocket you use for killing people behind a bush or behind a tree. Because it's got a very big uh, blast radius. I'd say the blast radius is about 10 meters right around it. And if you hit a car anywhere... Again, at any range, because the rocket can travel up to 600 meters very, very accurately. You're going to kill everything in that car. And if you hit the car right, you can still steal it. But if you hit the car standing still, point blank, you're going to destroy all the wheels. Okay, so you won't be able to drive it away. But if you, if you shoot an armored car, even when it's standing still, you'll destroy all the wheels and the car, but you can take off the armor. Okay, you can still steal the armor off the car. So, hope these 10 tips help you guys. And yeah, see you guys, see you guys on the island. Cheers. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Luna Dark in my community um, has just let me know that you either find the RPG on its own or you find one warhead rocket, okay? Or you find two anti personnel rockets. So they've nerved the rocket launchers to death. Um, it's like 20 times more difficult to find it than it used to be. Of course, the C4s are exactly like they used to be. You can still find TNT. Um, so yeah, a lot of love given. We have to see if it's going to change on the 0 0.95 update. But yes, if you guys enjoyed the video, click that like button. And if you guys want to see what is coming in less than a month to scum in the 0 0.95 update, click the subscribe button and that net bell notification so that I can tell you all about it and we can get excited together. Cheers, guys. Later.